Hello friends, I'm Chad Coffin, welcoming you to the River Church Telecast with Pastor Dale Berry. I'll be back at the end of this broadcast to bring you more information on the River Church. And now, here is Pastor Dale Berry. Now, let's just get into the meat and potatoes of this just for a minute, okay? Those are all just details and facts and things that we believe need to be said. But let's define life now. What does he mean by life more abundantly? The Greek word Jesus used in John 10, this is where your faith ought to go up a notch, okay? In John 10.10 10, to describe the kind of life he came to teach his disciples is the word parison. Parison, meaning superabundant, superfluous, overflowing, over and above a certain quantity. I'm going to say that again. I mean, it's so easy to read this book like a storybook. If you read this book like a storybook, you're making a big mistake. It's okay to read this book and get the storyline. I want to know the storyline to what God did in your life, but it's not just another story. If it is, I'm going to allow fiction to enter in. And God ain't got nothing but facts in this book. It's all, you, you don't forget the fact-checking stuff. Fact-checking was done by heaven. It passed all the tests. Amen, it's past the test of time. People try to destroy it and can't get rid of it. Amen. Let's read that one more time because we can't just look at John 10.10 10 in passing anymore. We have to recognize from now on, God took us from nothing to superabundant, superfluous, overflowing, over and above certain quantity. A quantity so abundant as to considerably more than what one would expect or anticipate. In other words, it's almost beyond your capability of thought until you hear some more scriptures that go with that. It's almost like you just automatically, when you hear the word life in the English language, and you know our language, you just hear it like, well, I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? I'm alive, that's good. That's good, but no, that is not what Jesus brought. You already were alive and breathing, right? Now, there's commands in Scripture that if you've got breath, you should praise the Lord. But, and, and listen, you are so fearfully and wonderfully made that that life is a big deal. It's a real big deal. But way beyond that is what we're talking about right now. We're talking about Jesus came and he gave you life and he didn't stop there. He said life more abundantly and that's described as superabundant superfluous overflowing over and above a certain quantity a quantity so abundant as to be considerably more than what one would expect or anticipate in short he promises us a life far better than we could ever envision reminiscent of 1 Corinthians 2 9 eyes has not I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those that love him. Now we know that we've took that a step further and we've read scripture that says, but he's revealed it to us by his spirit. Well, how many of you know there's a bunch of people sitting in pews that have not had it revealed to him by, the, by his spirit? A bunch of people sitting in pews and seats and church chairs that just know about basic life in general, which is a great thing. But you were not put on the planet to just exist with basic life. You were put on the planet to operate in, you could probably quote, superabundant, superfluous, overflowing, over and above certain quantity. A quantity so abundant as to be considerably more than one would even expect or anticipate. So just with your natural capability, at best, you're anticipating being the CEO of a major corporation, being one of the five richest people in the land. That's just one category, okay? You may not be anticipating that. But that's, this is man's thinking. We're, how do I get to the top of my food chain, you know? How do I get to the top of the list that I work in? How do I do that? Well, I hope that's not what you're chasing. Because if you're chasing this, you'll get where God wants you. And if it takes having that too, you'll have it. Amen? Amen. Paul informs us that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now that's Ephesians 3.20, which is real popular. We quote it a lot. 
But how far do we get past just basic existence to God's full intent on the planet? You know what I'm saying? You say, well, I got eternal life. Then use it. You say, well, Pastor, and you got a pretty big dream you're pursuing? Yeah, and I'm pursuing it more after this, even, even hotter, hotter and heavier. So many times we get a dream from God and we back off when it looks like we are judging it by real time or just existence of life. And we think, how could I ever possibly do that? I don't know, but what we should do is expound every avenue possible in our mind and heart to fulfill that dream. We should approach God that way too about it. Amen? Amen. I mean, has anybody ever done your dream before? Has anybody ever done it before? Whatever your dream is. Has anybody ever done what you dream about? I mean, if they haven't, it still don't mean you can't do it. But if anybody, if somebody's already done what you're dreaming about, every question about whether that's possible should have been eliminated just by that. Somebody did it, and maybe in their own strength, maybe even without seeking God. You see what I'm saying? I mean, we've got to learn how to take the limits off of God. Amen. Now, Andrew Womack has done it. And if you'll just go on his website and look at his stuff on taking the limits off of God and then look at what he's built since 2002, was it, when he first heard that? If you'll just look, don't look at what he did before 2002. Well, look at it and compare it <laughs> to what he's done after that. It's more than just he walked around the room and taped off the walls where they would be because they weren't there yet and opened the door opening. No, he had to get his thinking in line with the Word of God so that when he looked at a piece of blue tape on the floor it, or duct tape, whatever it was, then it made sense that there really is a wall going there and it really is here. Amen. We say things like, well, I might could do it if I had a whole lifetime. There we go, judging it in real time. Measuring it by how much money would it take over what period of time for me to be the one that could do that through the measures that I've seen successful in my life up to this point. There we go, limiting God about five different ways right there. You know what I'm saying? Limit God about five different ways. All I need, I found out all I, I, I found out by experience. I don't need a building because I've got, I don't get a building just because i got money. All I really need is favor with the one that has the building. I proved that several times. Several times. I've got buildings that I should not be in, should not be able to pay for. There's no way, no way that we should have three months of TV money right now. Come on now. Am I right? Amen. Look at Deuteronomy 30, 19, or just make note of it. Paul just informed us that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And the verse goes on, say, according to the power that worketh within us. What is the power that works within us to get this new level of life? These key scriptures I've given you today, that describes the power that works within us. Amen. Well, See, we read Ephesians 3.20 and we think, well, I guess I'm out. I don't have much power. You know what I'm saying? We judge everything by real time and circumstantial evidence. Well, I need this to happen for me, so I must not have much power if I can't get that done. If you're in a place of faith right now, you're getting it done. Amen. You're getting it done. If you're believing right now and not doubting the thing that God spoke to you and you're fighting off all negative thoughts pertaining to that assignment and you're yielding yourself with your words and with your thought life, to that assignment, you are in faith. If you're yielding to God's promises concerning that situation, you are in faith. We have limited God to real time and present circumstances. Forget that. We've got nice enough chairs, nice enough platform, nice enough property to hear about the next one. This is adequate. Not, not nasty, it's nice. This is really nice. We can enjoy this so we can pursue that. Amen. Amen. We got to have this many people to do that. That's what they told me. Every building I bought, every time I went on TV or every time I walked through a favor door. That's what they told me every time. I didn't have sense enough to believe them. So I went through the door anyway, and it worked. Hope you do the same things I did.
and didn't, be, didn't have sense enough to believe them. Ephesians 3.20, God is able. Say God is able. Now, what God wants to do and is able to do is exceedingly abundantly above where you're asking and thinking at this point, okay? That's what God wants to do. Exceedingly abundantly above where you're at right now. You mean God is not just really wanting to work on where I'm at right now? God wants to take you so far past where you are right now, you won't even remember you were here. Deuteronomy uh, 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life that you may live. Now, the, Deuteronomy says the only thing, the only thing stopping life to come in full degree is we hadn't chose to yet. We hadn't chose it yet. Amen. You say, well, I, I dream big, but you know, then I get sidetracked. Make the decision. Make, have you ever made a decision and went back, and then other times you made a quality decision, you just would not turn back? Anybody know what I'm talking about? There's a decision, then there's a quality decision. When you make a quality decision, you don't turn around. So this time when you choose life, make a quality decision. Live the rest of your life to fulfill it or die saying you pursued it. Let your testimony be, I wished I'd have went for bigger things, not I didn't go for anything. Amen now. Amen. You know, the crowd might not be what it's going to be yet. I might be speaking just to the ones that's got to lead the crowd. They might be waiting on us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The ones that are coming might be waiting for us to get there to lead them. Not pointing the finger anywhere because obviously you got to point right here first, right? Amen. How well I do with that will determine if you're sitting here every week how well you do, right? Here's just a little side note, and I think I might have mentioned this last week, but in, I'm, as I'm wrapping up, I was thinking about this whole thing that's got everything shut down right now, this whole COVID-19 thing. Again, it's by assignment, its own purpose that the church has shut down. You say, well, who are you saying did it? Well, would it make you feel better if I just say the devil did it and if anybody cooperated with it, it's still the devil? Will that make you feel better if I'm not pointing a finger at anybody that cooperated with the devil? Or do you want to know who cooperated with the devil? Which one? <laughs> Point is, the assignment is from hell to shut the church down. Why shut the church down? It's the force in the earth stopping the Antichrist from system from just taking it all over right now. Amen. And your quality decision, along with several million other quality decisions, maybe about 80 million, <laughs> it's what's going to determine whether we rise up and keep the Antichrist pushed back and stop this control in our country that's running this country and going that direction. You say, I think y'all just move on. Well, if Jesus comes on back, I will. But if he don't, I got a job to do, and so do you. If you're waving a white flag, you, you've surrendered to the devil. Or oh, you go talking politics again. Trouble is, they are running together, whether you want to admit it or not. There is a reformation taking place by the Spirit of God in this country. God is restoring this nation back to its roots, which was him. And you're bumping into some things along the way because we let it go a little further than we thought we did. We let it go further than we thought we did. I'm not throwing stones at anybody. Listen, we woke up this year, didn't we, honey? And we've been fighting it ever since. We woke up early this year. And we've been against, it, against that force ever since. With that said, I, I put this in there. Flu is not a time when everyone is afraid of dying. COVID is a time when people are afraid they will die, and that's by the devil's design. You say, well, I just don't believe it's a systemized, organized, whatever system trying to do this and, and the affairs of our country right now. I just don't believe they're, they're part of that. Well, let me just ask you this. Are they going down the same road? Is that the destination where they're both going to end up? Where a force or an entity or a group controls all the decisions of everything, whether you buy and sell? Come on now. Wake up, church, if you're not thinking right. But I believe you are. You wouldn't still be here. We talk about it so much. The flu campaign is simply a campaign to prepare for a season of sickness. I mean, by design of the devil, okay? 
everybody will start coming. It's flu season. It's flu season. And what's everybody do? They start expecting to get the flu. Well, after all, it's flu season. <laughs> what about divine health and wellness season? We decided to interrupt flu season with a new season called Be Thou Healed, Be Thou Made Whole. Amen. <laughs> now watch this, though. Watch this. The COVID campaign is to prepare you to be afraid of dying. Once you are afraid of dying, it matters not whether the devil kills you or not because you're slowly dying and you have left the process of bringing life. But what, Hebrews 2.15, And deliver them who through fear of death uh, who were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So once the devil, his assignment, all this year, are you saying all this was the devil? I'm simply trying to tell you I woke up in mid, early to mid-March and I knew there was some sickness, but there was also some other stuff running right alongside of it. Whether you want to blame that all those being one part of one thing, it doesn't matter. It matters that it's contrary to God, and we ought to be stopping it. We ought to be stopping the devil from doing what he's doing. Yeah, but what about what everybody else is doing? If you stop the devil, you stop that. Isn't that right? Still got to walk it out, carry some things out. Amen. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The devil does not need you to die. He just needs you to be paralyzed through fear of death. And at best, come over here among us and spread out about six feet and wear a mask and be real fearful about keeping your hands perfectly clean. You were already washing your hands if you used any common sense at all. However, however, common sense is a real mild, low-level law compared to the laws we're called to operate in. So please do not get lost in common sense. Common sense would have told you to stay home this morning. I saw white on the ground when I woke up. I'm not getting risking getting out there. Well, you know, it wasn't anything on the road time we left. I'm, if some of you live on a hill, it might have been different. But I'm just saying, I have overrode common sense so many times to fulfill my destiny, I can't tell you. I mean, you just, common sense makes you weigh it out, right? And you determine if you can supersede the law of common sense with the laws of God, right? I guess that's right, ain't it? <laughs> or do I need to clarify some more? The COVID campaign is to prepare you to be afraid of dying. Nobody this year has talked about the flu except to say, where did the flu go? <laughs> isn't that right? Where's the flu? I don't know. I guess nobody had it. COVID is big brother. It moved in and said, get out of here, flu. You're not operating today. Or maybe, just maybe, let's play devil's advocate for a minute. If I could get you to be afraid of COVID instead of flu, no longer will you be thinking you're going to go through a season and get through it. You'll be thinking about, I'm never going to leave that season. And so guess what? I'm not even going to do what I've been doing. And I know God said go into all the world and preach the gospel, but why is that church open down there on Central Avenue Pike? Common sense says you should close the door until the pandemic's gone. What pandemic? Plandemic. If you can't do nothing else, agree with me that the devil's behind some of these things, you know. You may believe in the reality of the pandemic, and uh, that's fine. But if you do, let's go back to the first part of the outline, and let's talk about from Timothy 6.12. Let's talk about getting aggressive, First Timothy 6.12, and fighting a good fight of faith and running the pandemic out. Our job is to get rid of pandemics. Our job is not to surrender on any level to a, a pandemic. Once we knew what the precautions were, we should have took them. If you had illnesses and elderly situations or whatever, once we knew the common sense guideline, it would have been fine to stay within that guideline for everybody and still be the church. But that didn't even what happened. Most churches stopped everything. And they never operated again with this shut. This was shut the whole time. They never operated again until somebody that said you can't have church said again you can. I think they're still holding out on that one a little bit. Am I right? Praise the Lord. I know you're with me. I know you are. 
I don't know where the people are watching on Facebook. So people all their lifetime been subject to bondage through fear of death. People all their lifetime been subject to the closing of the church through fear of COVID. I don't, I don't, I don't have that written down. So feed it back to me. <laughs> what did I say? People been subject to to shutting down the church through fear of COVID or something, huh? Through fear of death through COVID. It's true. Most people aren't afraid of dying of anything else, not anything that's new. Now, the devil told me until I reached uh, past my father's age that I was going to die at a very young age of a heart attack. And I told him he's a liar the whole time, but I quit hearing the voice once I reached his, at that age. Imagine that. Is the devil that real? You better believe he's that real. Look at Job. Job said in chapter 3, verse 25, the thing which I feared has come upon me and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. Why die of COVID when you can just stay home on Sunday? COVID's not at Walmart. Go to Walmart. Go to Food City and go to Kroger. You'll never catch it there. Well, at first it was anything spewing out. You know, so far, could get you. I even heard the other day, get this. I don't even remember where I heard it. It might have been from one of y'all. I even heard the other day, if your language is intensified and you're preaching, it might be more like 12 feet instead of six. <laughs> you see how far we let this thing go? My father-in-law was 86 and he had COVID. And common sense says, be concerned, treat him, make sure you get rid of the problem. And he did. But now he's fine. Well, I can see. Amen? Doesn't mean you don't use caution. Isn't it funny how the guidelines change in the beginning just slightly, ever so slightly, to fit the overall desire for the public to function or not function? Isn't it funny how at first you can't hardly do anything that's, oh, but we better open up the grocery stores or people ain't going to go along. We better allow this and that or people ain't going to allow. But we don't need church. Really and truly, I can guarantee your space right here better than they can guarantee your space at the grocery store or Walmart. And at first, they you know, they monitored the size of the crowd and all that. And I, I, I know they went with some specs and they've changed their guidelines according to specs. But really and truly for me, it was about once we know that you're going to go with my guideline, I really don't need it anymore until down the road when I really want to use it again. Whew. Did I say that out loud? Here's the promise of God, Psalms 118.1. You'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. It says, I shall live, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So really, when a pandemic shows up, the first thing out of a Christian's mouth ought to be, I'll live and not die. Now let me ask you this. Will it change your mo motions from that moment on if that's what you really have decided? Well, I'm not sure I believe it yet, Pastor. Is it the quality decision you made? Because I know your faith in some ways is catching up to your quality decision, but based on what I read in the Bible, I should still be making the quality decision. I might not understand everything about healing and divine health yet, but I've left. I'm not there yet but I have left and I'm not backing up to square one to figure it all out I'm getting it as I go so I'm going to meditate on healing scriptures since they're talking about sickness right now I'll counter it with healing scriptures amen I wrote this down it's John 10 10 again but I paraphrase it the thief comes not to steal elections kill unborn children and destroy the moral fiber of this nation that's what he comes for the thief comes to steal elections, kill unborn children, and destroy the moral fiber of this nation. Jesus said, though, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. Amen. Destroying death with life, destroying the works of the devil. Amen. And let me close with this. What does that life mean? It is superabundant superfluous, overflowing, over and above certain quantity, a quantity so abundant. So it's over and above a quantity so abundant as to be considerably more 
considerably more than where you are right now, more than likely, and what one would expect or anticipate. We even believe beyond what your normal thought processes are, he promises us a life far above that we could ever envision, reminiscent of 1 Corinthians 2, 9, I have not seen, you have not heard, or entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. So in closing, what are we going to do to allow our eyes to see and our ears to hear and allow the things that need to enter into our heart? What are we going to do to allow those things to happen to prepare us for the things that God has prepared for us, the one that loves us? What are you going to do to change? Starting today, it's not a good sermon if it didn't bring any change for you. It's not a good result unless there is results, right? God is able to do exceedingly, I believe he designed for us to read all them other scriptures before we read this one, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. With that said, we arise and shine because our light has come, according to Isaiah 61, 60 verse 1. Arise and shine for your light has come. I promise you, you're in a building that will cheer you on while it looks like you're not succeeding. So go for it. We'll cheer you on. If you fall flat on your face going for your dream, we will help you back up because a righteous man gets up and there's no righteous bystanders not helping a righteous man get up. <laughs> Amen? A righteous man gets up again and again and again. Go for your dream. Your dream is safe in here. You can share your dream in here and have people fuel the fire of your dream. Amen? I promise you I will because I need you fueling mine too. Amen? Thank you for tuning in today on the River Church program. We hope you can join us soon in one of our services. The River Church meets every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We are located at 6716 Central Avenue Pike at Callahan Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee. On behalf of Pastor Dale Berry and the River Church, I'm Chad Coffin. show